I'm Dr. Michael Kohler, and this is Thad, who works as one of Loyola's standardized patients. The purpose of this training video is to introduce first-year medical students to the steps of the lung examination. You'll remember last semester when we did the thorax uh, video, we reviewed surface anatomy, landmarks, and how to orient yourself with the vertical axes around the chest. And I can refer you back to that video of the thorax for those steps. And again, in this video, we'll just concentrate on the actual examination steps of the lung. And of course, before we begin any examination, we always wash our hands. So I'm going to first wash my hands. The first part of uh, the lung examination is to check for the respiratory rate. And of course, to do that, you need to observe the patient's respiratory rate. But if you actually stare at a patient and watch them breathe, they become very self-conscious and anxious, and you'll not get a true representation of their respiratory rate. So what's recommended is that uh, when you're checking the patient's radial pulse, you obviously count for 15 seconds uh, for their pulse, and then keep looking at your watch. Count the number of breaths for 30 seconds and out of the corner of your eyes or your peripheral vision, watch their chest rise and fall. The patient will obviously think that you're still counting their pulse, and then they won't be self-conscious about you watching for their respiratory rate. Count the number of breaths for a full 30 seconds to one minute to determine the respiratory rate. Since the respiratory rate is normally much slower than the pulse, you need to count for a longer period of time to accurately measure the number of breaths per minute. Also, during this time, you'll be watching for the chest wall's expansion, uh, too. You'll, you'll notice that the chest expands symmetrically or, or not at this point in time. So again, out of your peripheral vision, watch the chest, how it rises and falls. At this point, we'll go ahead and begin the first step of the lung exam, which is inspection. So if that, if I can ask you to uh, turn over or turn around to this side, and we'll actually go ahead and open up the gown here to visualize uh, the posterior uh, thorax. Check for symmetry of motion of the right and left chest wall. Also, look for any scars, rashes, or other skin abnormalities that may be on the chest wall. After you've finished inspection, the next part of the examination is palpation of the posterior back and chest wall. Certainly, if the patient complained of tenderness during the history, you would direct your palpation specifically towards that area of tenderness. In general, you want to feel for any abnormalities of the skin and subcutaneous structures. You might notice lipomas or sebaceous cysts as you palpate the posterior chest wall. You don't need to do an extensive palpation if the patient doesn't have any complaints. Next, we'll check for chest wall expansion. Let the patient know you will be placing your hands on their chest wall so as not to surprise or startle them. Place your fingers on the patient's lower thorax in about the mid-axillary line. Then wrap your hands around the chest posteriorly and grab a fold of skin with each thumb as the patient exhales. Let me demonstrate this technique for you. Begin by putting your hands at the bottom of the patient's thorax and grab a, a fold of skin together. You'll notice as Thad takes a deep inspiration, my thumbs move apart, and the skin fold that I gathered minimizes. Notice between each cycle that there's a symmetric movement apart of my thumbs, and also a symmetric decrease of that skin fold. If one side does not expand normally, then you think about abnormalities such as a unilateral bronchial obstruction, a lobar pneumonia, or a large pleural effusion. Next, we're going to check for tactile frematis. You'll remember that tactile frematis allows the examiner to check for palpable vibrations which are transmitted through the bronchopulmonary tree to the chest wall as the patient speaks. So we'll ask uh, Thad to grab his shoulders. By doing that, the scapula move laterally, and we increase the area of lung fields that we can examine. There's a few different techniques 
for examining tactile fremitus. Number one, Bates recommends you can use the ball of your hand or the metacarpal phalangeal joints. You could also use the ulnar surface of your hand to check for vibrations. Or finally, you can use the dorsal surface of your fingers to check for vibrations. You're going to do this symmetrically, uh, comparing right and left at the same time. So with that, I'll ask you, using my ulnar surface of my hands, to keep repeating 99, 99. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, Good. So using the ulnar surface of my hand, I checked for tactile fremitus. You could also use the dorsal surface of your hands to check for tactile fremitus or you could use the balls of your hands to check for tactile fremitus. Certainly you should check in three areas posteriorly and one area laterally. If you were to find that one side is decreased or absent during this part of the examination, you would concentrate the rest of your examination on that part of the lung fields. Next, we're gonna focus on percussion. You remember that this is a difficult technique but hopefully you've learned to master it since the thorax video. Again, the act of percussion, you place your index or middle finger uh, on the patient's posterior chest, and with your other index or middle finger, strike quickly two or three times. You want to, of course, begin at the top of the lung fields and move inferiorly. Again, you start at the top and you always compare side to side, right to left, left to right at each level. It would be an error to go straight down and percuss on one side and start to percuss on the other side from top to bottom. It would also be wrong to start at the bottom and to work your way up as you percuss. Remember, percussion must be done on skin and not over a gown or article of clothing. And again, you need the room to be quiet so you can hear these different pitches. Let me demonstrate the technique one more time for you. Good. 